of L1 in inner speech. We discussed the role of the first language of the learner in mediation, in the zone of proximal development and scaffolding, and um, the uh, deep processing of knowledge that we would like our in learners to engage in, all under the theory of socio-cultural learning. Now, within the same theoretical concept, the third important uh, aspect is inner speech. Now, sociocultural theory places a lot of emphasis on the inner speech of the learners and it sees it, conceptualizes it as the key tool through which they learn the language or any other um, learning. So, what does this inner speech do? Before moving on to the points on the slide, think about your own use of inner speech. What happens when you confront a difficult task? What do you do? You certainly talk to yourself. That voice in your head is the inner speech. Sometimes you're talking to yourself aloud and sometimes not. So you say, all right, if a task is complex, I will do this part first, then this part, then I will do this one. So this has to make sense because this happens this way. So this should have an influence on this. This is what we call metacognitive thinking. This metacognitive thinking happens through the inner speech. It enables you to manage your actions. It enables you to appropriate or readjust your um, information, make it systematic, and it regulates your thoughts and your knowledge structures. It emerges, as we discussed, when the learners face a difficult task and they want to simplify it, they want to manipulate it and they are struggling with self-regulation. They want to guide themselves through it. Now, if inner speech is a dominant mode of verbal thought, it is there in, uh, used by all human beings in all sorts of learning. It is a central fixture that remains in your head always. And it governs mental uh, functions if it is all that important. The question we want to deal with now is what is the language of this inner speech? So that is the fundamental question that we would like to engage in. Think about it yourself also. What is the language of your own inner speech? especially when you were in your classrooms and trying to learn this English as a second language, what language did you use when you were talking to yourself? What language do you use now when you try to engage with different types of learning? So, of course, it has to be the first language. However, Having said that, you must have heard your teachers telling you to think in English. So when they are saying that, they are actually trying, you, trying uh, to emphasize on the learners that they need to move on from actually um, adopting the uh, second language as a tool of inner speech. However, this does not happen overnight. That means we cannot possibly give up our first language and move on to the learning of the second language and using that second language. Think about the complexity of the task we are demanding from our learners. We want them not just to learn second language, but immediately use that second language to think about the second language and how it works. 